get a part, listen me Mugging at 16 on the scene, watching beans Bugging, kicking up dust with the old OG Soaking up the game that was told to me yeah, Hey, what's up, family? Wanna see us? Well, let's go ahead and kickstart this day with offering up our prayer to the Lord, giving them honor and respect. For at the end of the day, family, this is what we're called to do in life. Let's do it. Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd, so I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures, and he leads me to still waters. He makes me pursue only righteousness in my life. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff comfort me, and you prepare a table for me in full view of my enemies. You anoint my head and overfill my cup, for only goodness and love shall pursue me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I love that prayer, family. For me, it's so monumental because you know what? We walk through the valley of the shadow of death, whether that's through loss, pain, suffering, whatever is following us in this life. God is right there and he never gives up on you. He chases you because he's crazy about you. That's my Jesus. So check this one out, family. And let's talk about the betrayal of men. As I had once told you guys about the first stabbing that I had committed in Sentinella, um, what I didn't say was this. Um, so when I had volunteered to go ahead and uh, whack this dude, because remember, I was still under my false belief systems and I wanted to prove my self-worth. I made it a point to put myself in front of the, the fella so I can go ahead and be, and be utilized for um, something that needed to be handled around the facility. As I did that, other youngsters were doing that as well. So when I knew that my time was up and I was going to go ahead and move on this dude, they told me that another dude was going to come with me. So I was like, all right, cool. If anything, I felt a little bit better because I wasn't going to be the only one uh, going to the hole by myself. I was going to be able to share that experience with another youngster who um, was also in the process of earning his bones. You know, family, so we go to my pad. Remember, I'm single cell at the time, so um, I can't have a celly, but the hoodas weren't tripping and they let the homie come in my pad. Like I said, he was 19. I was uh, 17 at the time. And boys, family, so we're right there. We, we smoke the lanyo. We're right there chilling. And um, we're explaining the holiday. We're explaining how we're going to move on this dude and the different glowels that we're going to be taking. I knew that he was just going to be taking tobacco, and that was that. And, um, you know, family, I asked the bottle, like, I don't know how it came up, but, you know, I, I asked him, like, how much time he had. And um, what he was busted for. And he told me the amount of time. And then he told me that he was busted for for rape. And I looked at him. I was like, what? Like, because, no, these guys aren't supposed to be in our yard. And he was like, yeah, some some girl accused me of this and that, whatever, right? And um, that's why I'm trying to get to the back to, to clean it up and um, speak to the people that can go ahead and give them the pass to remain in the the population, because that's another way that the prison system functions, right? I guess he had people that were connected to the streets and they were all trying to uh, vouch for the vato. So he had got at the Yavero right there and the Yavero was like, yeah, all right, cool. Don't trip the next opportunity. Your name, your, your, your time will come up and you'll be able to go to the back. So he was trying to clean up his issues, uh, but kind of threw me off, right? So I remember talking to the homie, and I was like, hey, fool, like, why are you sending me with this dude? And they're like, no, no, the dude's legit, fool. Everything is, um, we checked his paperwork, we read all his transcripts, and um, the heightener was lying. You could see it. How they were able to determine that, I don't know. How they were able to determine that, and the uh, jury wasn't, I don't know, family, right? 
but I'm only 17 years old, so I have to just follow the way that um, institutions run it, right? So anyhow, and, and, and the dude was a solid dude. I mean, you know, he went on the highland. He performed the way that he was supposed to. We went to the oil. And even when we were in the hall, I went ahead and stroked up a wee lot to the fellas back there. And they were like, it's all good. Uh, the people on the yard that had already told us what was up with this dude. And it's all good. And so he was able to uh, remain right there, family, for I think we waited right there for about four months before we were transferred from uh, Sentinel Hole to Corcoran Shoon. And, you know, I didn't consider the dude a, a bad dude. I mean, we ended up being on the same um, ad set yard as well. And, and this was during a time when the administration was still um, introducing. Um, uh, they weren't segregating the yards as much yet. They were still going through the process. And so they were still intermingling. So, uh, for instance, um, us Southerners were with the. Uh, with the whites and we shared a yard and and oftentimes they would bring northerners and blacks to the yard everybody knew that you couldn't fight these dudes yet um because you needed for everyone to come on the on the yard and once everybody was on that yard then you would get them up with these dudes oftentimes you had to be a real alert because if they were bringing one of the blacks or the, the northerners to the yard and we weren't sharing the yard with them at the time some of them would just rush you and you know that's just, that was just the process that we grew up in family. But uh, anyhow, so we made our way to Corcoran Shoe family, right? And remember, this is me still beginning to understand the process of men. And when we got to Corcoran Shoe, me and the homie landed in the same building in um, Corcoran Shoe, which was on the 4A1 right. That's where we ended up going. Um, we were in, we both landed in B section. I was in cell 31 and I think he was in cell 38, um, which was on the top tier, right? So because he was um, 19, he ended up going in with another dude from Baker's. Shout out to Baker's. And um, West family, When you're there, you have to give up your um, 128. Your 128 is uh, it's your paperwork letting them know what you were uh, in the shoe for. So what you had been doing on the yard that caused you to get the infraction. And on this paperwork, all your um, charges are going to be on there. The charges that you've picked up inside the institution, as well as the charges that um, you were convicted for. So they're going to know off the bat who you are. And as you've been seasoned into the system, it'll have your validation status, your gang status, whatnot, right? But for us youngsters, we were barely coming up. So we we're just going to talk about what they, the little bit of uh, what they had on us on file, right? Sure enough, right? It comes up. Now, I don't know what's going on, family. Think about it like this, right? As far as I'm concerned, the dude's legit. He's cool. He's in the back now. He's trying to fix his issue. But back there, it wasn't accepted, you know? So this is how it panned out, family. The dude goes to a visit. I'm like, all right, I mean, like, saludos. We had already been there for a couple months. And he goes to visit, whatever. There's fishing all the time in the shoot. So, you know, there's no reason for me to really think that something's going on. And at the same time, because I'm a kid, I mean, I'm not going to be privy to a lot of the information that's happening in the, um, in the oil right there. And remember, this dude was my crime, so the guys weren't going to tell me anything. And what does a 17-year-old kid have to um, know about the, the issues of men? I mean, you know, it's just the way it was inside the system. Um, so anyhow, this dude, he comes back from visit, I see him, I was like, all right, only because, you know, the door opens and it's a very quiet pod. You see, you see everybody that's coming in now. So I knew the homie was coming in, coming back. I was like, all right, I remember saying his name and all that stuff. Goes up the stairs, family. He gets, uh, um, he turns a little skina. They cuff up his sally. Bato goes in the pad. They close the door. 
is Sally happened to go first, which, you know, when you're in a cell with somebody, I mean, you're either going to get uncuffed first or your, your um, cellmate's going to get uncuffed first. I didn't know then what I know now, right? You always want to be that one that's going to be uncuffed first because you don't know whether or not your time is up. If you've been doing things in the system for quite some time, you're going to develop enemies. And you don't know if they're on some smear campaign to get you moved on or if something that you've done in the past is going to follow up with you because that's what happens. But because even other youngsters didn't know anything like that at the time, he go ahead and moves to the side and he lets his Sally um, get uncuffed. When he does that, where his Sally had the knife, I don't know. Like I said, I didn't even know one was being fished to him, right? All we know is we, all, all I know is that I hear the hood saying, hey, stop it, get down. So from the sounds of it, um, this dude started moving on this, on this uh, other guy while he was cuffed up. Now, keep in mind, family, I don't know what's happening, actually what's happening. I don't know if it's the homie that just came back from visiting that's smashing on the celly, or if it's Sally that's smashing on his celly, the one that came back from the visiting, right? I don't know what's taking place. I just hear the commotion. I hear the hoodas, um yelling, spraying, pressing their alarms. I tell them, get down, get down. Like, like leave them alone, leave them alone. And um, I don't know. I mean, you know, I, I don't even know if the, the other Bata didn't get uncuffed. But I come to find out that he was still cuffed up when his celly started moving on him, right? So and that's how I'm giving you guys the play-by-play. -play. And... um. So this dude is stabbing the crap out of this dude, right? He's stabbing him up. And um, I feel in my cell, I'm like, dude, what's happening? Like, like, what's going on? You know, remember, I'm still, I'm only 17, so I'm still kind of, uh, I'm nervous about these type of things. And um, eventually, they let the bottle out. They pull him out of the cell. Man, I could see from the side of my, my door that the food's covered in blood, right? still manages to walk and not um be put on the gurney when they they were trying to put him on the gurney because medical comes and all that stuff right and he's like no nah, no nah, i'm gonna walk and so he starts walking down the stairs and he's leaking from his head like all this blood is leaking from his head and, and of course his body i don't know if it's just from his head that that's uh where he's bleeding from or if it's from different holes inside of his body but there's a lot of blood and he and it's the homie that was my crime and he looks straight at me because he's walking downstairs and I'm in the corner of the cell family. He looks straight at me and he's like, all right, homie, all right. Like with his hands behind his back. And I'm like, and I just go like this. I'm like, I don't, like, I'm trying to let him know. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's happening. And um, so I jump in the van and I, and I asked the homie that was down for me, well, it's happening because he was the one that was um, overseeing things. And I told him, and he says, I'll get at you later for this was not welcomed. And I'm like, right away, I'm like, hey, this is a good dude, man. He just put in work for us, fool. Like, what's up with that? He says, I'll get at you later. So once everything clears up and the black guys and all that stuff leave, squad. I even see the guys uh, selling, um, get escorted. I was a little guy, but I mean... He put it on this dude, you know, um, and they clean it up, whatever. Send it. They didn't even clean it up at those times. Um, they put the guy, but once they move out the, the guy's property, the one that got moved on, um, they send his silly back up in there and the silly starts cleaning this and that. And I'm just like, damn, like, whatever, right? So I get it to me. I end up fishing down the tier. Well, uh, over the tier, I get it. Um, <clears throat> And he sends me a one time. And so I read the wheeler and he's telling me that the guy that's in that facility that was overseeing the facility, you know, um, one of the higher ups was saying that nobody with these type of jackets is gonna be welcomed right here in um in the shoe. And that they needed to clear up their issue, they were gonna go through a process to get that issue cleared up. And so the homie was telling me that he didn't have a choice. He had to move on this dude. 
and it was the first time I really got to see the inner um, the inner uh, politics of the game because in one place it could be okay and in another place it wouldn't be okay so you were dealing with the mindsets of men you weren't dealing with a specific um, system that was based on rules and regulations because rules and regulations had to deal with black and white whereas in in certain aspects of the prison system there's gray areas aside from just gray areas family there's also favoritism i know a bunch of people that have got away with a bunch of things i know a bunch of people that have some very horrible jackets on them but you know what they got passes from different people that's the treachery of men family and so we always have to be mindful of that because when people are in power, they're going to do everything they can to protect their own. Look at Hunter Biden. His own dad protects him from all kinds of other things. Both of them are Epstein uh, Island people. So, you know, just think about the means of power, family. It's a treachery of men. And it's something that we always have to be focused on because remember, we live in the world, but we're not to be a part of this world. We've been called out and set apart by God. Because I know we're living in these last days, family, it's very monumental that we come to understand these things, whether that's through the stories that I'm able to explain to you from the standpoint of understanding redemption because I've been saved and called out by God, or whether it's from the things that you guys are seeing in this world. This world is corrupt. But it's supposed to be like that. And this is something to think about, family. It ain't going to get any better. It's going to get worse. Scripture says that it will get worse in the last days before the second coming. So remember this, family. We've seen the whole little COVID lockdown. I wasn't out here at the time. I was still in the prison system. But they forced us all to get them shots. Man, I don't know what they put up in our system, man. You know, it was like a, a, a mandatory thing in our lives. We were going to be continuing to program or it was going to make us look bad into the, in front of the board. So we were required to take it. And I even got that damn booster shot. I regret it, family, but hey, this is what they did. But we've seen the policies of the world and how they can try to control you, especially through isolating you, locking you down, and um, making everybody go through a frenzy to start over buying things and now and people were, were starting to run out of stuff right there's something new that's coming we're gonna in, we're gonna be introduced to some type of famine what it is i don't know but a lot of the prophets have been talking about this so it's something to uh really look into family but remember understand the treachery of men those that are in power those that are in the system are the ones that are orchestrating all of this be mindful be at peace Accept the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, into your hearts. Believe with your ears and confess with your lips. Believe with your ears, meaning let it drop into your heart. Hear it and let it drop and then confess it. We don't have much time left, family. But with that said, I love you. God bless you. If you ain't a subscriber, subscribe. And for those of my supporters, continue to support. Send them likes, send them comments. We got some more podcasts coming up with Mish, and we got a bunch of other things that we're trying to introduce when it comes to scripture. God bless you, family.